anyone live with a channel surfer? You know that annoying person who must control the TV remote and watch multiple shows at the same time? You do, don't you? We all have them in our lives. So imagine they're switching the channel, so they always come back to the base channel, right? That being the one that they're sort of watching, and then whenever the urge strikes, they just switch channels. It doesn't even need to be connected to a uh, commercial break. How annoying is that, right? Well, my brain can take on TV remote-like properties. No, I'm not saying that I have the power to control the annoying power clicker and win the war on channel surfing, but my brain does provide me with moments of channel surfing, if you will, when I'm expected to be sitting quietly. So if I were sitting in your seat right now, attempting to watch this TED Talk, the talk would be my base channel. Excessive daytime sleepiness would take hold, and I would nod off to sleep. REM intrusions would invade, and I would begin dreaming, or channel surfing, if you will. I would wake up, and the cycle would repeat itself over and over and over again as I attempt to watch this talk. Now get a load of this. If I were attempting to take notes, from the talk, dream content would get recorded in my notes. How cool is that? <laughs> right? Well, it's not so cool when it's university lecture notes that I'm trying to record. I had to turn next to the person sitting beside me and say, may I borrow your notes? And they'd give me a perplexed look and say, but you're here. I'd sheepishly shrug and say, Kind of. I used to stress out about it back then, feel like a complete failure. But I've come to the resolve that chances are I've likely missed absolutely nothing if the talk was that boring that it caused me to fall asleep. So within that single channel surfing analogy, I've provided you with about four of eight or so symptoms of a little challenge that I've been gifted called narcolepsy. I spoke of excessive daytime sleepiness, little micro naps, REM intrusions, automatic behavior. Other symptoms that are included are hypnagogic hallucinations, sleep paralysis, multiple nighttime awakenings, and cataplexy. Yes, narcolepsy is a strange, mysterious genetic neurological disorder whereby there is a, a decrease in the number of neurotransmitters called hypocretins. Those neurotransmitters are responsible for the sleep-wake schedule, or the sleep-wake cycle, as well as other bodily functions such as blood pressure or metabolic rate. As we can see by my not-so-svelte physique, a high metabol metabolic rate is not the problem here. Not to mention the fact that I can consume an entire bag of chips while asleep. Yeah, wake up, empty bag of chips, crumbs everywhere. Food still in my mouth. Speaking of food, narcoleptics have an insatiable craving for all the wrong foods. Again, the physique, despite the fact that I'm an elite athlete. So eating is not the only thing that I can do while I'm asleep. Recall the term automatic behavior that I just mentioned earlier? So imagine, you walk into a room, you forget why you're there, right? It happens to us all. When it happens to me, it's usually while I'm doing some other mundane tasks, such as the note-taking, the chip-eating, or mowing the lawn. Yes, you heard me right. I said mowing the lawn. Picture this. My neighbor gets into his car door. The slamming of the car door causes me to wake, and I'm bent over a push mower. About to do what? I have no idea. So I shake out of the fog, I ask myself, where am I? What am I doing? And only to look back and see, I've cut an entire length of my front yard while asleep. So I have no idea that had I looked back in that moment, so I was very excited that I actually didn't, 
um, on that day, look back at my seemingly inebriated handiwork and start laughing. Because had I started to laugh, cataplexy would have rendered me lifeless on the front yard, albeit conscious, next to the mower. Now, wouldn't that have been a sight for the passerby? Now, when I was young and forced to take naps, I do them by accident now, but anyway, my only recollections of getting down to the bottom of the stairs after my nap was flying, wearing a white dress. Now, I knew I couldn't fly, but the most disturbing part of that whole scenario was the wearing of the white dress. I despise dresses, so it was more like a recurring nightmare. So that flying dress scenario is not unlike what you would recognize as daydreaming. But we narcoleptics require a much more sophisticated terminology to reflect our sophisticated brains, and we call that hypnagogic hallucinations. We can actually be physically awake while our brain is still in sleep state, which means we can actually respond to the things we hear and we see in our dreams. So I can recall calling out to my mom, hey mom, come and see the pretty colorful snakes that were slithering underneath the steps upon which I sat. The sound of the side door being opened in a panic caused my mind to wake as I looked up to greet my mom and point her out, out the snakes to her that were now gone. I'd often call out for people to stop banging the pots and pans, I'm trying to sleep, only to realize I'm home alone. I've gotten up to answer a door, and nobody's there. Some of you in the room can likely relate to the, the excessive nighttime awakenings that you had when a new baby was home. Recall how absolutely exhausted you were? Recall how trying to re remember your full name was a challenge? Well, take that, multiply it by 100, and consider the baby never grows up. That's what it's like for me. I have never had a full night's sleep a single night of my life. I wake up multiple times, and for no good reason. So you can imagine my delight when I did have a baby, and all of a sudden, I had a reason to be up multiple times a night. Now, none of what I've outlined is exclusive to narcoleptics. You, too, actually experience all of this strange phenomenon, but you do so when appropriate, when you're asleep and unaware. Overall, narcolepsy presents me with a flawed existence. I can't stay awake, I can't stay asleep, and I experience phenomenon that you non-narcoleptics can only experience with illicit drug use. <laughs> Without these flaws, I'd probably exist more like a combination of Oprah and Ellen together in a superhero's body. I'd be fighting crime and presenting people with uh, lifetime-changing opportunities daily while competing on two national teams simultaneously. But instead, I'm presented with the daily challenge of simply trying to stay awake. That's a very grounding experience. It's downright frustrating and depressing. In fact, my day-to-day -day is kind of like a quest to keep depression out of my personal space. To do that, I have to surround myself with positivity. I have to generate positive energy from within my really tired body. So it becomes more like a matter of acting on the things that light me up. You know, finding reasons to be awake from moment to moment. For example, I love doing just acts of kindness. I work behind the scenes to change, to change an industry. I also uh, like to challenge social constructs. So this has meant that I really have to get in touch with the things that I value. Those things never put me to sleep. They fire me right up. I'm really inspired by opportunities to make a difference. And because I can't do so in the more superhero persona that I would like, I do so on a much smaller scale. And then it all adds up to, chat, to, to uh, making a difference. For example, I thoroughly enjoy putting the smile on the face of another, whether that be through telling a joke or simply smiling at the person as I pass by. I like to pump people up and provide them with support as they work to become the best versions of themselves. I like to do the right thing, no matter how difficult 
scary, or alienating might, that might be. Hell, I can't afford to lose any more sleep than I already do, so I have to make choices that I won't lose sleep over. I like to be a compassionate and understanding person who truly relates to the struggles of another. I can give them permission to be flawed while offering them the time and the space to achieve and conquer. I'm TCS's greatest grantor of extensions. <laughs> I like to lead by example and never give up. There is nothing better than to feel completely spent with 300 meters left to go in a race. I dig deep, I find it, and I give all I've got, like nothing else matters until the race is over. Teammate tells me she looked up during the race, saw me giving it, and that inspired her to do the same. Those moments where I just give 100%, I'm narcolepsy free. All of the symptoms, they don't exist in those all-out moments. And not only are those efforts inspiring to someone else, but they're inspiring and energizing to me. Now, in order to do all of this, it does require that I take care of myself. That means I need to operate by my rules, not those set out by society. So, for example, I don't beat myself up over the fact that I'm using cue cards to deliver a TEDx talk, or that it's going to take me longer to write said, said TEDx talk, or mark big projects, or complete report cards. The reason being is that I'll need to take several naps in order to avoid long periods of unproductive brain fog. I give myself permission to be flawed, and I embrace those flaws. They present me with challenge, and I love a good challenge, because when I conquer it, it gives me a great sense of accomplishment. And then from that, I f it feeds my spirit so that I can actually do more. So narcolepsy aside, flaws are not crutches. They're the windows to our greater purpose. Being flawless would mean no opportunities for creativity or to be fearless. And being fearless isn't approaching life with rec reckless abandon, but rather looking the flaws in the eye and saying, hmm, thanks for challenging me to see another way. I think I'll try that out. Sometimes when I reflect upon my accomplishments, I can't, I'm, I'm actually inspired. I can't believe what I've done given my greatest challenge in life is to simply stay awake. So if I may, I would like to leave you with a question. And that question is, what would it take for you to inspire yourself? Thank you for staying awake. And for those who did not, I've got your back.